Hi, Ashley. Thank you for talking with me today about smart instrumentation. And I can almost say instrumentation. <laughs> it's a hard word. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So I, I want to dive right in. Um, when we talk about smart instrumentation and process automation, what are we referring to? So smart instruments, including transmitters, sensors, actuators, are instruments that can monitor not only their own performance, but also can tell a user what's going on with a process well beyond the specific variable that they're measuring or the function that they control. So yes, your pressure device may be giving you a pressure, but if you could have a pressure device that in addition to the pressure variable is also giving you, um, is your impulse line plugged or is the electronics in the instrument starting to go bad, right? So more than just the pressure value, you are actually getting process data and data on instrument performance and health. And are these smart devices uh, for process automation, are they mostly applicable for large manufacturers or can smaller or mid-sized companies benefit too? So both. Now there are different levels of smart instrumentation depending on what you want to purchase and how tightly you want to control the process. Uh, but smart instruments are, gosh, they are in such a wide bandwidth of end user costs right now. You can find smart instruments that are very cost effective for processes and that would work very well for smaller manufacturers too, just depending on what they're looking for. So they don't have to have a massive process automation system going, a massive mm -hmm. factory. Okay. And in fact, having smart instruments is going to help save manpower right? So your employees that you have can focus on doing other jobs rather than maintaining instruments. And for smaller manufacturers that may have less employees and less of a workforce that they can dedicate to smart instrumentation, that's mm -hmm. especially important. Yeah. Well, when you talk about less man less uh, labor, what other benefits or advantages does smart do smart devices provide then? So the smart devices are going to provide everything from inline data. So is there something wrong with your process, right? And that's very important. A, a good example I can think of is our radar instruments. And the newer radar instruments can now detect, is there foam in your process? And how much foam is in your process? And is the foam impacting the signal? And for any manufacturer, that could trigger them to turn on defoaming agents for the process. That could tell them something is wrong, like, oh, my process is not supposed to be foaming at all something is going wrong, right? Um, or if they're getting buildup on the face of the radar, it can now detect buildup. So they know to do a PM to clean the face of the radar. And maybe they have to do that PM every four to six months, where before they were doing it monthly. Now they can get away from a monthly PM and space that out. Well, that's a good example. And I know that things are changing quickly with advancements in the IOT and connected um network. So what do you see as where and why the industry is moving forward it's with smart instrumentation? So everything right now is about data and the quality of data and how much data that somebody can pull from a process. Um, we are seeing changes in process instruments. Like it's I'm just trying to think of how to describe the leaps and bounds the instrumentation has taken just even since I've been working. And I have been with Anderson Hauser about nine years now, and there's been a huge evolution in mm -hmm. what an instrument can do. Um, so it's, IIoT is on trend. Um, like everybody is looking into the industrial internet of things. Everything needs to be connected for companies to be competitive right? There've been so many workforce changes over time and having access to process data can help mitigate some of the impact of the workforce changes, right? Having control over your process and having the instruments give you the data where before we used to be able to rely on a very knowledgeable workforce that had been like, you might have one person who's been in a factory for 20 years, right? Like my grandpa spent his whole career working in the exact same paper mill. You could ask him, anything in that plan, he would know exactly what something was doing, right? Because he was the quality guy. And we just don't have that anymore. And having smart instrumentation and having 
interconnected processes are giving our younger, newer workforce the tools that they need to be able to do that. Even if they don't have 30, 40 years of experience in the exact same paper mill, they at least have the data and the knowledge that they can make decisions with now. So they're gathering all this data. Where do they put it and what are they doing with it specifically? So it depends. Um, the data itself that they're gathering is often stored in their process systems. So like a PLC or a SCADA or some kind of system, right? Occasionally people will push it to a cloud, but I think cloud adoption is slower at the moment. Um, it is slowly rolling out and it is becoming more popular, you know, Clouds are becoming more popular over time. But right now, a lot of it's being stored on site, like in their own personal data centers or in their own personal servers. Now, if a manufacturer is already using smart instrumentation, why would um, the processes of diagno diagnostics, verification, and monitoring be necessary? Is that complementary to what they're already doing? So it is very complementary, right? And that's going to be a combination of what we were talking about before with the workforce and just having more, you know, before, if you had a really experienced technician, they could walk up to a radar and immediately know to make adjustments, right? Like, oh, the process is foaming and I can tell because the radar is doing this. Now, you know, you could just have the radar tell you and you're saving yourself so much time. You're saving yourself having to climb on top of that vessel which could be 150 feet in the air, right? That's a safety concern that, you know, depending on the weather, it could be windy, it could be rainy. So rather than having to climb 150 feet in the air, you can connect to it in an environment controlled control room away from a process that may even have dangerous process media and away from the ladders and away from anything else that could possibly not only cause harm, but, you know, so it's really putting the information in the hands of an end user and in the hands of technicians that they can make educated decisions based on. And it's giving them the answers up front without them having to go chase it down. And if I don't have to chase down an answer for my radar and I can immediately get an answer for my radar, then I can move on to the next problem, right? I don't want people focusing on problems when it comes to my instruments, right? I want them to have a solution in hand. I want it to be fixed. I want it to be done. I want them to forget my instrument exists until it dies after 20 years of service. That's what I want. So being able to give them the tools to do that as much as possible is what's important to me. What's important to end users is that they get as much solved in a day as possible. So by not having to focus on my instruments because my instruments give them the answer, then they can focus on other things that are going on in the facility. And part of that efficiency is having the information available on mobile devices mm -hmm. uh, with field technicians anywhere in the world. Absolutely. So um, a lot of instruments coming out now are Bluetooth enabled. That is a feature, right? It doesn't have to come Bluetooth enabled, but being able to have something that's Bluetooth enabled, like I know all of my instruments that are Bluetooth enabled, if there's a problem, I can click the error code. I can look up suggested fixes for the error code. I can look up suggested fixes for my process or, you know, and it's guiding you through not only fixing the instrument, but it's guiding you through the setup of a new instrument, the troubleshooting of a troublesome instrument, or even the safety parameters, how to do safety parameters, how to set something up for SIL. Um, it's telling me how to pull reports and all of the reports that I'm pulling on instrument function automatically come with a serial number on it. It automatically comes time and date stamp and it automatically gives me a spot to put my signature as the technician. So it's making paperwork easier. And so people can spend so much less time doing paperwork. Sorry if anybody loves paperwork. I do not. <laughs> but I don't know spend... that anyone's going to say they do. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> uh, but you can spend so much less time working on paperwork and filling out the paperwork because the instruments are doing it for you. And you can focus on other things that you have to worry about. So let's look at applications in a specific industry how can smart devices help instrumentation in the life sciences industry? That's something I'm particularly interested in. Um, maybe you could describe how smart devices can play a role in optimizing calibration and CGMP compliance. Yeah. So calibration program intervals depend on process criticality and the long-term stability of measurement instrumentation. 
So when it's time for calibration, process interruption is inevitable and seals must be broken to apply calibration fluid to the instrument. The latest generation of mass flow meters are so reliable that the calibration cycles of two years or longer are possible. However, with extended intervals comes an increased risk of random failure going undetected in the meantime. So built-in verification technology, such as heartbeat technology, provides security between each calibration program and can even be used in strictly regulated industries according to certification by TUV or TUF. It, it's said either way. <laughs> so the increased availability and measuring point reliability that heartbeat technology offers are just two of the many benefits driving life science industry users to optimize their calibration procedures. So you can combine wet calibrations with heartbeat verification, and it helps decrease calibration frequency and increase intervals between wet calibrations. So you can fulfill the traceability requirements according to ISO 9001, which is third-party certified, increase confidence in your measurements between wet calibrations and ensure the measurement accuracy without interrupting the process or having to break the seal. And that's why it's so important. So you must have examples, other examples of how your customers are using smart devices and with their process instrumentation. Can you talk about some of those? Oh, absolutely. So one of my favorite examples is our, um, TrustSense temperature device. It's a self-calibrating temperature device. Uh, and the way it works, you have your RTD next to a piece of ceramic inside the instrument. And when your process reaches a temperature degree of 118 degrees Celsius, the dipoles in the piece of ceramic lose alignment. And then when the process cools down, the dipoles realign and the instrument can detect the dipole realignment and self-check the RTD against the dipole. Now, a Curie point is a known physical phenomenon. So the Curie point is when you lose the, the dipole alignment and realign. And it happens at the same exact temperature every time for that material. So it's just like the triple point of water, which is what a lot of people calibrate to, where you have ice vapor and liquid water. Um, and we had a customer who their process didn't quite get to 118 degrees C, but they knew that by having a self-calibrating temperature device and a temperature device that was generating its own paperwork, that they could drastically cut down the paperwork efforts and the calibration efforts. So what they did was they would just remove the device from process because temperature devices can be installed in thermal wells, so they don't need process interruption, put it on a heat block to simulate the change in temperature, and then just put it back in the process and let it cool down. So even though their process wasn't getting as high as 118 degrees C, they saw enough value in simulating that temperature change just so they didn't have to do the paperwork or the calibration. And that cut down their time drastically. We have a whole white paper on it if you're ever interested, but oh, just- I definitely am. You know, I'm an yeah. editor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but no, that was probably one of my favorite examples because we, we as a manufacturer are like, oh, well, your temperature- the temperature of your process doesn't get that hot. And they're like, that's fine. We'll make it get that hot as long as we're not doing that paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and it's traceable, right? The paperwork's traceable. The calibration's traceable. Like all of it's completely traceable. And that's why they were so interested. Yeah, that's key for compliance. And mm -hmm. you mentioned the heartbeat technology earlier. That's a mm -hmm. Anderson Hauser technology. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about that? Yeah, so heartbeat technology is an Anderson Hauser branded term. Uh, and it it's hard to describe exactly what it is because it varies by product line, right? But it is an overarching term that describes our technologies within our instruments that allow them to be self-checking, that allow them to generate the reports that we're talking about, and that allow them to truly be smart instruments and give end users data that they need their hands on in order to make informed decisions about their plan, their processes. So that really supports the diagnostics and verification and monitoring. Yes. Yeah. Well, to wrap up here, do you find that customers or use, your users have a hesitation about using smart instrumentation that you'd like to clear up? In other words, do you have a key takeaway you want our listeners to understand about smart devices? I think that there is always some hesitation when it comes to change. And I think that that often lies in making sure we're getting the right message across when it comes to that change. 
And so if there is anything I would love to tell end users who are maybe unsure of if smart instrumentation is for them, it's that I'm trying to think of the best way to put it. I apologize. It, it's, it's really taking data and putting it in your hands. It's not taking the process out of your hands. Does that make sense? That's I think a good so, way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's giving you information and it's not taking anything away. Right. We're not looking to take away when it comes to changing calibration intervals. We're not looking to take away when it comes to spacing out the PMs off of cleaning a radar. Right. I want to help you help your process and I want to help you help your technicians. Right. That makes total sense. And I think that's a great note to end on. So it's really been a pleasure talking with you about this. Thank you for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. And thank you to our listeners for joining us. Please be sure to subscribe and give us a five-star rating and a review. I'm Teresa Hauk with The Journal Magazine, and we'll chat again soon.